We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. Uh oh, thrift diving. Hey, what's up? I'm Serena Pia from thriftdiving.com, which is a podcast, a blog, and a YouTube channel that helps you decorate, improve, and maintain your home with paint, power tools, and thrift stores without sacrificing your budget, the environment, or style. Welcome to episode 69 of the Thrift Diving Podcast. And I want to first acknowledge that I totally forgot to publish a podcast on Friday. I publish every Friday and I've been doing this since early 2020. (laughs) Or is it 2021? No, early 2021. So it's been a year and a half and I forgot to publish. However, However, because we don't do perfection here, it's still Sunday. I'm recording this on Sunday and I'm going to publish it on Sunday, which means I didn't miss the week. So hmm, (laughs) I'm going to give myself a little bit of grace. But today we are going to be talking about what happens when projects go wrong. What happens when projects don't turn out right? And you try to do everything possible to plan Remember episode 60, 68, we were talking about how to properly plan your projects. Well, guess what? This week, I had a project go horribly wrong. Not horribly, but it felt horribly wrong. So just imagine, just, you know, if you're hopefully not driving or doing something where you can't close your eyes, but just close your eyes or just pretend to close your eyes and imagine you have this great idea for a project. You're really excited to work on it. And... You've spent $200, maybe you spent $50, who knows? It's all arbitrary, but you spent some money to buy the materials to make this project and you were not sure how to do it. You didn't really have good detailed step-by-step instructions. So you don't really know if it's going to turn out. It's just something that you wanted to do and you're working off of, I don't know, a hope and a dream. (laughs) And you go to do this project, you go to execute Part of it goes well, but part of it is a complete flop. What do you do? What, what, why did that happen? And what do you do? How do you salvage this project? Well, we're going to talk about that today because you know how I like to do. I like to talk about things that happened during my week. And this project that I told you about at the end of episode 68 was this canopy project. And I didn't have good results. I did not have good results. And You might be surprised when you hear that because you might be thinking, well, Serena's been DIYing for years. You know, she knows what she's doing. Of course, she planned it out. How could this happen to her? If it can happen to her, it can happen to me. Well, yeah, it still happens to me. And I'm going to tell you all about it. So at the end of episode 68, if you remember, I was crossing my fingers and I said, well, I did one part of the Canopy Project. And the Canopy Project was something that I had been wanting to do for quite a while, right? We've been in our house since 2010. And I I learned very early on that we had day biting mosquitoes. These Asians, they're called Asian tiger mosquitoes. They bite all day. They're black and white striped. And they don't just come out when it's like five, six, seven o'clock. They come out at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. They're out all hours of the day. And that has pretty much rendered our outdoor space either useless or you got to be covered in bug spray. That's just, that's just it. I mean, when I'm working outside, I can't wear shorts. I have to slather on bug spray to keep them at bay. And sometimes it can get pretty hot out there and I'm working in, you know, long pants and socks because I don't want to get bitten and forget about having dinner out there and then actually like enjoying family time outdoors. It just doesn't happen around my house. So for the longest time I've wanted to build or, or buy, not really buy, but I really wanted to build something that would allow us to use that outdoor patio and not be eaten up by mosquitoes. So Aero Fastener, one of the brands that I work with, I do, well, usually each year I do four projects for them. So this project was coming up and, or I should say a project <laughs> was coming up and I didn't even know what I wanted to do. Honestly, I it took me a long time to even get to to get to the point to decide what project I wanted to do. But I decided, okay, I'm going to do a canopy, a shade canopy, and I'm going to use their little grommet kit. 
I used it some time ago to make a shower curtain. You can find that link down below. It's actually a really cute shower curtain. And I decided, let's use the grommets. We haven't used the grommets in a long time. And I think I'll use the grommets in order to create like a retractable sunshade. I'm going to be able to just slide this thing aside, let the sun come into the windows, and then I'll just slide it into position whenever we're outside. And I'm going to do something with mosquito netting too, so that we can actually use this. So I started drafting something up on the computer on SketchUp and everything that I drafted out looked good. It had all the specifications. I had a clear idea of what I was going to do and I didn't research it first, but I figured I'm drafting it out on the computer. I have a pretty good idea of how this is going to turn out. Let's move forward. So if you remember at the end of uh, episode 68, I told you it was not difficult to take the planters, put the four by four posts in concrete in the big planters. And the idea was I was going to fill them up half concrete, half dirt, and then just get some pretty flowers. So I did that part. By the time I recorded last week's episode, I'd done that part. Everything was fine. It was great. But if you remember, I said, well, crossing my fingers because I haven't done the canopy yet and I haven't done the wire ropes. So I don't know how that's going to go. Well, I'm here to tell you it was a complete bust. That's right. I knew from the moment I went to, to put one little grommet, like, you know, how I'm, how I'm describing it is like, if you can just bear with me here, cause I know this is just audio and not visual, but the idea is that each of these four posts, were going to have wire ropes. And I would have to feed these wire ropes through the grommets and have it retractable on these wire ropes. So in my mind, it seemed like it would work, right? Like these ropes are going to be nice and taut. The fabric is not that heavy and I'll just be able to move it from side to side. Well, the minute I started putting that, that canopy, sliding those wire ropes through the grommets, the whole thing just started pulling down. I mean, gravity was like, ha, you think this is going to work? Let me show you something else, girlfriend. (laughs) And even though like once I was able to get everything connected, and that was another thing, it was not easy to actually put this together because some of the wire rope stops that I had to use, I needed to use like a ratchet, like I had to use a tool in order to even tighten it up. And I thought, okay, Serena, this is getting too complex. Nobody's going to do this. It's not easy for the average DIYer to have to get all these tools and materials and these clips. Like it was just, it was one of those projects where you think it's going to be simple and then it just starts to expand in its complexity. (laughs) And you start questioning why, why am I doing this again? Like I'm, I'm doing something wrong here. So everything just started pulling down and towards the middle. And so the fabric of this canopy was dipped. I mean, it was really dipped down the middle. There was no structure at all to the, to these ropes. And so of course my husband comes out and he always has a criticism, (laughs) but I mean, I was, I was criticizing as well, but I knew that I had to fix it. So he comes out and he's trying to push it up off his head and he's like, well, should it be like down so low? What about when it rains? Is it going to collect in the center? He's asking me all these questions and I'm starting to get like really upset. I'm telling him, I know that these are problems. I have to figure out how to fix this. And I had to sleep on it for a couple days and figure out how was I going to fix this. So I'll tell you what I did in just a moment, but let's step back to your projects and let's step back to thinking about why does this happen? You know, last episode, we talked about planning out your projects. And I told you that there's a process that I use to plan out projects. But even if you are the the most stringent planner, and you have gotten everything down, step one, I do this, step two, I do this, step three, and you're writing it down and you're following your plan, it doesn't always work out. And there's a couple of reasons why it doesn't work out. You know, number one, maybe you didn't plan everything properly, right? Like sometimes, like I mentioned in the previous episode, I like to just jump into a project without researching it, without Googling, without checking Pinterest without going to YouTube, because I want my own creative ideas to flow through when I'm working on this project. I don't want to know what Stacy from, you know, this particular blog or whoever, I don't want to know what they did 
to make this project that's similar to mine, because I, then I'm going to be influenced by them. And I mean, I know that, that sometimes we can look at what other people do and get creative ideas from that, right. And put our own personal spin. But me personally, I think as a content creator, I don't want to do that because then I feel like nothing that I'm going to do is original, right? Like I don't want to just be another project that, that is resembling what everybody else is doing. That's just not what I do. So I don't like to research it a lot, but I do like to plan. And as I mentioned in the last episode, I like to sketch it out on paper. I will go into SketchUp, which is the free program where you can actually model it. So you know what the dimensions are. You can get a good idea of what that project is going to look like if it's something you're building from scratch. Now, if it's a furniture makeover, you might just need to write down, okay, step one, I'm going to remove the drawers. Step two, I'm going to clean everything out. And it can be really simple like that. Step four, I'm going to make sure there's no cracked like veneer or anything that I need to fix first. So you can draft things out in that way. And that's great because then you know what you need to do. Step one, step two, step three. But in this instant, this, this project, there was only so much planning that I could do because I'd never done this project before. So some of the planning involved going to like wayfair.com and looking at some of the shade canopies that are already like, like ready-made, not a DIY, but just a ready-made and just seeing, okay, well, what hardware are they using? And being able to take note of that. So I did plan, but there's another reason why things don't turn out. Even if you've done all the planning, you might have just been very inexperienced and didn't know what you didn't know. I didn't know that when trying to do a project like this, those wire ropes have to be so tight. They have to be so tight because otherwise the weight of that fabric, even though you don't think it's very heavy, just having that fabric sliding on those ropes, it's pulling it downwards. And remember, I'm not attaching this to my home. These are not even fixed posts. They're just in planters in concrete. So that's going to pull the planters in. You don't want them to fall over is, you know, a big rainstorm going to dump a, a huge amount of rain in the center and then it all caves. I mean, I just didn't know. And this is what I was dealing with as I'm looking at this atrocity. I'm like, did I just create this madness? <laughs> Is this ugly project mine? Like, did I really just create this bomb? So sometimes when you don't know what you're doing, this is one reason why it can happen. But I think, you know, there's a lot of things that you can learn when things go wrong, right? Things they, like things that you didn't anticipate. So I think that there is value in that. But the thing that really sucks is that you waste a lot of money. Your ego takes a hit. You're not sure sometimes how to even turn it around and you might even have to go and buy more materials, right? And that's a, that's exactly what, ha- like all of these things happen to me. And you might even miss your deadline. And that also happened to me. So these five things of why it sucks when your project goes wrong, these five things all happened to me. And I'm going to go through one of them. So, or go through each of them. So the first one is I did waste a lot of money. You know, these wire ropes and the clips and all these things that I kept going back to Home Depot to buy, it added up. I did not add up total. Like, I don't know what the total is in my mind right now. Didn't add it up on paper, but I know that by the time I was done that project, those ropes, those wire ropes and those clips were literally laying in a heap next, you know, next to the project. And I thought, I sure hope I can use that again for something. I couldn't use it. Like it was, it, and I had thrown away all the packaging. I'd opened up everything. And at that point, you know, it was a loss other than the fact that maybe I'll get to use it for another project. And that happens sometimes, you know, sometimes I buy more than I really need for a project, or sometimes I'm not sure if I'm going to do like the red or the blue, whatever it is, or the A or the B, and I'll buy both thinking, okay, well, I can always return one. And sometimes I don't return one. And that's extra money that I've spent. But I know that whatever I've purchased, it's going to, I'm going to use it eventually. But you know, you don't want to be buying things that you don't need. But I did end up having to, you know, quote unquote, waste a lot of money on materials that I ended up not using for this project. So that's why it sucks when projects don't turn out because you waste a lot of money. And some people just don't have a lot of money to even go out and even buy the first round of materials, much less going back and buying the second round of materials. In fact, 
So for this project, I wanted to keep the mosquitoes out. And so I ended up buying, I think I bought from Amazon like two pieces of mosquito netting and didn't realize that two were not going to be enough. I mean, they were like 10 feet by 25 feet. So I'm thinking, oh, 50 feet, that's going to be more than enough. Well, I ended up needing three, not two packs. So again, that was something else that I ordered that just hadn't planned for, just didn't know. So sometimes you do have to spend more money for more materials. Now, what I ended up doing is I took all the ropes down. And what I did was I went to Home Depot and I bought some, I guess they were maybe two by two pressure treated boards. So they were like square, square little boards. I thought that's perfect. I don't need anything heavy at the top. And I used some exterior screws to connect the top of those four by four posts. So I literally made what looks like a canopy. You know, if you think about a canopy bed, right? Like that's what I did. I just put some posts at the top and connected it. So that actually gave it a little bit of strength, or I should say it it made it just even more rigid. So then what I did was um, I actually went into my garage because again, I buy materials sometimes that I don't use for other projects and it sits there for years. Well, I had done a project years ago. If you remember, I did a project, what was it? Um, for the garage and I did a garage door screen. Well, that was actually Velcroed in place, right? It had a zipper. So if you want to lift your garage door up and let me, I should make a note about, because I want to make sure that I put that in the show notes so that you could actually look at that. You know, if you are somebody who likes to use your garage for doing projects and stuff, but you don't like the bugs flying in, you need this project. (laughs) It is a screen, a DIY screen that you can just use some Velcro. And of course you have to sew it, put a zipper in it, and then just, you know, Velcro it up to the entrance of your garage door. I mean, it's an amazing project. It was like 80 bucks to make. Well, I had some leftover rolls of this Velcro, this extreme Velcro, and I had four rolls of it. And I was like, that's what I need. I need four rolls. So I did use four rolls. And so at the top of that canopy, I attached the hook and loop or the hook part to the top. And then with the mosquito fabric, I sewed the loop part onto, or maybe it was the hook part, the soft part. I actually sewed that onto the top of the mosquito netting, right? And I was able to turn this project around. Now for the canopy, I will tell you the way that I was able to turn that around is when I had done my research, I had gone to, like I said, wayfair.com. And I noticed that some of these canopies, these ready-made canopies, canopies are using little bungee cords, bungee hooks. And I thought, hmm, that seems like a, a really easy way to attach a canopy to like a rope or piece of wood or something. I'll order, I'll go to Amazon, I'll order a couple of, couple packs of them, and then I'll have them there just in case I need them. Well, when I decided to do the rope instead of wood, I just set them aside and I wasn't using them. And then when the ropes didn't work, I was like, wait a minute, I ordered those bungee hooks. Yes. So I'm going to fix it with the wood at the top and I'll use the bungee hooks in order to attach this canopy. So I say all that (laughs) to tell you that I actually was able to turn this project around, but my ego took a big hit this week. I was really upset about this project because, you know, I I, I thought that I had planned properly. I thought that I knew what I was doing. I felt like it was going to be a great project. But, you know, as I was working on it, I just realized like this is too complicated. It's too complex. It's it's not something that people are going to want to look at and say, oh, yeah, I could easily do this. And that's not the kind of project that I want to do. I want you to be able to look at a project and say, oh, my gosh, that's so cute. I think I can do that. Like, I, I know I can do that. I don't have any special tools, but I can get some concrete and some planters and some bungee hooks. And, you know, all I need is just a few pieces of wood. I can make this happen. That's what I want people to 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 think when they see my projects. And when I started down that other path, it was not happening. It was too complex. And it was just, I mean, the wire rope was sticking me in my hand. It was just not pretty. So my ego took a hit and I felt really stressed last week, or I should say this week, in trying to turn this project around and not being sure. Like I feel the anxiety in my stomach, even as I talk about it, because I thought, oh my gosh, like this is going to be a horrible project. And you know, not only do you want to do a a good job for your own home, 
you want it to meet your needs. You want this project to turn out because this is what you have in your mind of what it's going to look like. But you also disappoint your family, your friends, because they're looking at you like the way my husband looked at me when he came out and started making comments. It just, you know, it just made me get very defensive. And he wasn't being mean. He was just asking things like, oh, is this canopy supposed to be hanging so low? (laughs) Or when I had put up one of the mosquito nets with the Velcro, he's like, oh, how are we going to come in and out? You know, he's asking me normal questions, but it just kind of annoyed me because I knew that I, I was still working things out in my head. And the fact that he was asking me these questions made me feel defensive that like I'm not capable right? So my ego took a hit because it it wasn't all coming together immediately. And I missed my deadline, right? Like this is a project that Aero Fastener had been waiting for since, gosh, I mean, technically it was due in April, but because the the project before that took longer, they said, okay, we can, we can, you know, we can have you turn it in in May. Okay, great. May's good. Well, I didn't really get the inspiration for this project until like the middle of May. (laughs) And I took all my time to like plan it out. I'm going to plan it out on SketchUp and figure out what I'm doing. And, you know, getting started on a new project is challenging. As I said in my last, you know, episode 68, it's sometimes hard to get started on projects. Oops, sorry. I'm like, I have my, my dinner sitting here in front of me and my ring just hit on the (laughs) bowl. It's looking really good. My husband's such a good cook. I'm, I'm so thankful to have him. He makes really good meals. He comes home at the end of, uh, a long day of work and he comes home and makes dinner. I'm like, thank you. Thank you. Cause I'm out here struggling, trying to get this project done, but I missed my deadline. I missed my deadline. I was supposed to have it in May. And as of recording this, it's June 5th. And the brand is still waiting on it. I still haven't even edited any of the footage yet. And I have to figure out, okay, how am I going to tell this story of how this project came to be and tell people like what went wrong, but then how I was able to turn it around. So I got to do all that tonight. And I I mean, I told them that it was going to be done earlier this week. And I ended up telling them, like I sent an email yesterday. "Um, I'm not going to have it on like for actually it was Friday. I'm not going to have it on Friday. I'll send it to you on Monday. So, you know, these are all the reasons why it really sucks when projects go wrong. The money, your ego, you're not even sure how to turn it around. You know, you got to buy more materials. So I, I get it. So if you are somebody who is just really afraid of getting started on projects because you're afraid of any of these things, the struggle is real. We all go through that. But here's the thing. Here's the beautiful thing. I think when things do go wrong you have to figure out how to turn it around. And I don't know if there's very many projects that are truly unfixable. You know, sometimes we just get to the point where we we're just sick of it. Like we don't even want to fit. We don't even want to finish it. We just put it in a corner and then we let it continue to stress us because we walk by it and we see it and it just sits there. But if we can figure out a way to turn our mistakes around when a project doesn't go as planned, or if there's just one part of it that doesn't go as planned, if we can figure out how to turn it around, there is huge value in that. That is growth. Because now you've learned something about the the quality of like the paint that you're using or the tool that you're using, or you learned something like I did about gravity. <laughs> you know, you you have a different appreciation for how things are are put together that you didn't have before you started this project. There's there's always something to learn out of mistakes. And I think for me, I realized that if you are trying to build something that's supposed to support something else, like you've got to have that support. You know, in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I can just make these wire ropes be really taut and I'll just be able to retract this. No, 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 no. If that's going to happen... Those four by four posts should have been mounted in the ground and concrete where they're not moving. If you've got them in just a planter with concrete, that's, that's not, I mean, that's not secure. So you can't have any like, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like pressure or, or pulling. You can't have that exerting that force on that four by four post. It's just not going to work. And so now I realize that even though it should have been apparent to me, but 
you know, the, the material for the canopy was heavier than I thought. And working with the wire rope was a little bit more challenging than I thought. I couldn't get it to be very taut. At least I couldn't. You know, is there a special tool that that people use in order to get that wire rope really taut? Or just the fact that it's in a planter, it's not going to get as taut as you need it to be in order to slide this thing back and forth. And it just didn't work. So I learned something from that. But I also realized that sometimes you know, you just have to go with this, the most simple solution, right? The most simple solution, because as I mentioned earlier, the project was really starting to get complicated. You know, you needed this tool in order to, to put up the wire rope. And then if you wanted to take the canopy down, you had to get that tool in order to loosen it up. Like that was just too much. So for me, as I was thinking, I was like, Serena, how am I going to fix this? I said, well, the, the, the best option would be to just put some other wood at the top. And you've got Velcro, you've got four rolls of Velcro from an old project. It's been sitting here for like three years. This is perfect. We're going to, we're going to do this. We're going to put this up here and we're going to make it work. And let me tell you, this project looks fantastic. (laughs) I am so happy that I was able to turn this around. It took a lot longer than expected because, you know, trying to sew all these pieces of mosquito fabric that stuff is so light and airy that it took a long time to sew on the bias tape that I had to put at the bottom. I did the, I did the top. That's where I put the Velcro. But at the bottom, this was another problem that I ran into. When I started sewing up this mosquito fabric, any sort of strong wind that came along, the whole panel of mosquito fabric just whoosh, I mean, it literally like blew up in the air. It didn't blow away. It was still attached with the Velcro, but it was blowing up in the air. And it just, I'm like, okay, well, that's not going to stop bugs from flying in if it's, you know, blowing all the way across the canopy. And if people are sitting here on the furniture, well, I mean, how's that going to be when you've got a piece of mosquito fabric that's blowing into your face? So I realized I was going to have to weigh down this fabric And I went to Hobby Lobby because I had some material, but I didn't have enough for what I needed to do. So I went to Hobby Lobby yesterday. I got some two inch bias tape and they actually had curtain weights. So it took me like all of last night and then, you know, part of today to sew on bias tape at the bottom of these curtains. And I, I sewed in the little curtain weights. So now when I put that up with the Velcro, when I put the the mosquito nets up with the Velcro when the wind was blowing today. Now it wasn't, I'm not talking about like hurricane force winds. I'm talking about just a light breeze because this stuff is so light. Any little bit of breeze uh, starts to stir it. But because I put the bias tape with the curtain weight at the bottom, now it's not moving anywhere. Like the, the, the mosquito fabric will sway And it's actually so pretty. Like I was sitting there today just enjoying not having bugs flying on me. (laughs) And the fabric kind of reminded me of a, like a wave. Like you could just see like the gentleness of the fabric moving back and forth. And the bottom wasn't moving because of the weights and, you know, the extra, um, and I had a little bit of bias tape. They didn't have enough for me to do all four panels, but I was able to get some other kind of fabric that was even thicker than the bias tape. And I think that even worked even better because it's really rigid and it's, it's holding it down. So now the mosquito fabric actually sways in the wind, but it doesn't go out of place. And so it's beautiful. It's actually very relaxing to look at on a windy day or a slightly windy day, I should say. But overall, I was able to turn this project around because I just, I decided to kind of take a step back and say, okay, Serena, what can I do to make this simple? And I realized, okay, putting some wood at the top is going to give this a little bit more structure. And remember, Serena, you bought two packs of those bungee cords and you've already got your grommets, you know, from when you thought you were going to do the wire, just put the little bungee hook through the grommets and pull it over that two by two pressure treated wood that you attached at the top. And I did it and it worked. (laughs) I had to make some adjustments. I had to, you know, cut things down or, you know, the, 
the canopy was a little too long, so I had to put a little fold in it to, to try to remove some of that fabric. But overall, it looks good. So right now, when I look at the pictures and I think about how my family is going to be able to use that space and that it looks great, I just feel so happy. I was able to turn it around. And not every single project you're going to be able to turn around. Like sometimes a project is just going to be so egregious. You're going to be like, you know what? Yeah, we're not working on this anymore. <laughs> and I think if that happens, that's okay. T try to take the lesson that you learned from it to then use that knowledge for your next project. You know, don't beat yourself up too much. Like if I wasn't able to make this work, I think I would beat myself up only because I know that it was sponsored, right? Like I know a brand is waiting for me to submit a project and get it posted to my channel and get the blog post done. But if you're just, you know, doing a project for your own home and something didn't work, try not to let it beat you up too much. But you know, when you do run into those problems, try to think, okay, what are the solutions? What's the problem and what is the solution? If the problem is, like in my case, this, these, these wire ropes are starting to sag. I need something with more rigidity here. Okay, let me go get some pieces of pressure treated wood and we're going to get that, we're going to get that up at the top. And, and give this thing more structure. And then we're going to use that. We're not going to use the wire ropes for anything. Maybe we can use this for something else. But, you know, the, the point of this, this episode is just to tell you that I understand. I know the struggle. I know the fear of getting started because you don't want to mess up. But messing up is just just a part of DIY. It's going to happen. And sometimes you're not going to be able to turn a project around. I'm trying to think if there was a project that I've ever done where I was not able to, to turn it around. And somehow I'm always able to, <laughs> I think there is, there has to be at least one project, but usually I'm able to turn around most projects, but I'm going to keep thinking about that. Cause I know there has to be at least one instance where I'm like, okay, this is too far gone. Actually, you know what? There is one project. There is one project. And I don't, I don't know if it's a matter of I don't think it was a matter of like, it didn't turn out as expected, but it was, it was more of like, you know, I didn't really know how to continue. And it was a table that I found at the thrift store. It was a metal table, like a vintage metal table. And some of the parts of it I had removed, which was like right around the border of the table, there was like a piece of rubber that was really nasty and it had cuts and slits and it was just dirty. And I thought, I'm just going to throw this away, but I didn't know what to replace it with. And I think when I was working on the project, like even just trying to remove the top, it was like a rubbery, it just, it was just a mess the, like literally the project is still in my garage. It's been probably three years and I have not gone back to it. Most likely I'm probably just going to get rid of it. I'm not even going to attempt it. So, you know, if you come across a project that it's not going as planned or it's, it's, becoming a little bit more difficult than you expect. If it's not something that's due for like a brand, then just scrap it, just scrap it and move on, learn from it. If there's nothing that you feel you can learn from, maybe it was just a poor choice of project, then just do that and just move on to something that's going to bring you joy. Because I can tell you this week, this project was not bringing me joy. It was really bringing me a lot of stress. I even was like dreaming about it. Like, okay, how am I going to fix this? How am I going to fix this? I'm out on my runs in the morning. Like, how am I going to fix this? What am I going to do? And then it came to me, oh, I got them bungee cords. Oh, I can put some wood at the top. Oh yeah. We're, yeah, we're going to, we're going to make this mosquito netting like, like fabulous. It's going to work. I'm going to make this work. And I, I remember even telling my husband a few days ago, I said, I don't know if it's going to turn out, but we're going to make it work. And I said, and if it doesn't work, I said, we're going to make it work. <laughs> so sometimes even just having that attitude, like, okay, I'm going to find a solution to this project because we going to get this project done. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you this week. I'm sorry that I didn't have the episode for Friday. I will have the video for this project probably tomorrow, hopefully not Tuesday, because this brand, oh, Aero Fastener, if you're listening to this, I'm so sorry. But DIY, it's so hard to just know when you're going to get something done. It, you know, things happen. And I think they're going to be happy though, because it looks fantastic. <laughs> and I did go out there this evening. I, I haven't been out there since the sun's gone down. This is, you know, this is the time to really test it when the evening mosquitoes come out. Oh, and also on a couple of the posts, um, I did wrap some lights, some battery powered lights 
all around the posts. Now I didn't do all four posts because I only had two sets of lights, but I can't wait to go outside and see how it looks like right now. <laughs> I'm just excited. Now there was, there's one thing that I don't like about this project and I will tell you, I have been resistant to do anything over my patio because the three, I have three windows right there on the patio that go into my family room. And anything that I put here, I knew that it was going to block the sun going into my family room, which just drives me crazy to have a dark room. I hate dark rooms. And years ago, we actually paid probably $1,800 to get this huge tree removed because it was blocking all the sunlight into the family room. Well, now I've got this canopy here and guess what? It's blocking all the sun to the family room. The good thing though, is that because this canopy is just held up with bungees, I can easily, like if I know that we're not going to be out there for any length of time, I could easily just remove some of the bungees and just let the canopy hang on one side so that, okay, it's not, it's not blocking the sun. But if I know that we're going to be using it, then I can go up and you know, later in the afternoon, once the sun kind kind of comes up over the house, then that's when it starts to get dark in the back anyway. But in the morning, when I come downstairs, I love that my kitchen is filled with sunlight. I love that my family room is sun filled with sunlight. And I paid $1,800 for that sunlight. So having a canopy there is kind of annoying me a little bit. But I know that <laughs> This is temporary too. I can take apart those wooden structures at the top. Even though the concrete planters are heavy, you know, you can just turn them uh, like, you know, at a 45 degree angle and you can roll them really anywhere you want to in the yard. So I'm actually thinking now that this project is done, got my pictures and videos, I might actually move this canopy over to a different part of the yard. I'm not sure yet like where that's going to go. I might even put it behind the shed and just have like a seating area behind my shed. I'm not, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet, but I just know that I cannot block the sunlight. Like the sun just makes me happy. I need sun in my house, but that's the most negative thing about the project. Everything else looks good. It feels wonderful out there when you're sitting. You, I feel like I've just created like a whole other room to my house. <laughs> now in terms of cost, I, I don't know. I have to add up the true cost. I mean, the true cost is everything I bought that i ended up not being able to use. But the actual cost of the materials that I used, I'll have to add that up for you. And I'll put it in the video and in the blog post as well. But again, if you have a project that doesn't go as planned and you can scrap it, you can't come up with any solutions and you're just done, just scrap it and move on. It's not the end of the world. Don't feel bad. Just learn whatever the lesson is that you were meant to learn for that project and then just keep it moving. Or if you can come up with a good solution, have that be a challenge. How can I fix this? And if you need a little bit of time to think about it, you know, do that. But that could, you know, that's where the the growth comes from, right? How can you overcome these, these challenges that you run into with your projects? All right, guys, that's what I have for you this week for episode 69. Next week for 70, I'm not sure what I'm going to be talking about, but I'm not even sure what I have going on this week. Honestly, I don't even know. Oh, I will give you, an, give you an update. I am going to have air conditioning, thank God, in my shed probably in the next two to three weeks. I am waiting on the Mitsubishi mini split to come. I've got an HVAC guy who's going to come and install it. It's expensive as you know what. It's going to be about $5,200. Yeah, $5,200. That's a lot of money for a mini split. But I got two quotes. And the second quote, the guy was even more expensive. He was quoting me like $6,200. So, I, and it's it's pretty much the same brand, Mitsubishi, uh, Mitsubishi mini split. Now, there, there probably are some less expensive options. However, I, I want something that's going to be efficient because I'm going to be in my shed all day, every day working. And I need it to be nice and cool in the summer and nice and warm in the winter. So that's what I'm going with. So I may include video of that. I'm not sure. Definitely come back for episode 70 because we're always doing fun things and talking about fun things here at Thrift Diving. And if you have a question or a comment, or if you want to tell me about a project that you did that didn't turn out, 
and maybe you fixed it or maybe you scrapped it, email me serena at thriftdiving.com or just hit me up on Instagram at thriftdiving. I want to hear about your DIY mishaps. (laughs) We all have them. So don't be embarrassed. All right, guys, I will see you next episode. 